I'm going to talk a little bit about breathing and why I use one of these. And this is the Breath Builder. It was invented by Arnold Jacobs, the tuba player that everyone loved because he was so musical. Um, Christian Steenstrup is one of his pupils, he's a trumpet player who takes them around the world and gives masterclasses. This isn't to, a substitute for any of those, you can find those videos on YouTube. But I use it because it's the most visual and instant device that I've ever found as a teaching aid to help someone play better. Because when they blow air down it, the ball goes to the top, and when they suck, the ball should stay at the top if their diaphragm is engaged. So they blow. If they don't suck, the ball will fall to the bottom. And that's the big shock for most people. They pick it up and they think, okay. So as soon as you get a free movement and your diaphragm says, hello, your diaphragm doesn't talk to your brain. It doesn't have any nerve endings to say it's there. You can't tell what it's doing. So you, this gives you visual feedback. So if I'm playing myself or if I'm teaching and you think you're playing, you're making a nice sound, you're concentrating. You can find that if you use the breath builder, you just open everything up. So just let the air go. You don't do it too much, we start to see stars. And then you put that air down the instrument, you don't fight it. And it gives you more dynamic range, it gives you more flexibility because you're not clamping, you're just moving air. And one of the key things that the Breath Builder teaches you about is not doing what's called the Valsalva maneuver. This is when you block <coughs> and you put a stop to the air and put pressure. And this is fine for childbirth, it's fine for straining, it's fine if someone's going to punch you in the stomach, but it's not fine for wind playing. And you'll find a lot of us do it. Conductor brings up and we think pianism entry and we're going <gasps> And then you don't know what's going to come out. It's going to be an explosion because your muscles are fighting. So if you've got the breath builder, when you're thinking of that air, just like a wave going up and down the beach, we're not going to stop the air. We can take a breath. We can decide we're going to play. I'm breathing out now, but I haven't put the air under pressure yet, and I'm not going to stop it. I'm just going to blow. I was still breathing out. So where you put your tongue and engage that start of the note is up to you. And that gives you a much more freedom than because <laughs> that's a horrible feeling because you really don't know what's going to explode. Much easier if you've got the air just moving and you can just increase it enough to get the reed to vibrate. If you've put it on stop, who knows what's going to come out. So I find this an incredibly useful tool. I've taken it to double read days, some other teachers have sort of laughed at me, but I have never found anything which is a substitute for this. It is such an instant change. I've taken young players, oboists, bassoonists, showed them a short video on YouTube of the diaphragm so they know what they're dealing with. They blow on this and the audience hear the instant transformation, so it's, it's very satisfying to use. But I use it all the time myself. I'm, I wish it would just calibrate me forever, but it doesn't. It's something I use and I put on the stand if I'm playing a difficult passage, trying to make a better sound. Take some puffs on that, not too many so I don't see stars. Has some little holes on the top if you want to simulate higher pressure for like top notes. That gives you some more to push against, but that is the breath builder. Cheap, cheerful and very, very useful.